it's going to take all of us with thin privilege to get on board to make a difference in this. She's talking about thin privilege. This chick is fat. So I don't know if you're talking about you having thin privilege because maybe next like Tess holiday, you have thin privilege. I don't know if, if you have, if you tend to have seizures because of bright colors, you might want to avert your eyes temporarily. Okay. 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 Eh, this is like a, oh my God, there's just too much going on here. This is too much going on. Thin privilege ah. part two, unexpected thin privileges. I'm not subject to eugenics and could receive fertility treatments if I wanted to, and my kids wouldn't be taken away from me for being the same body size as me. Crash test dummies were made for bodies around my size and seatbelts work for me. My BMI doesn't exclude me from being able to donate my body to science, and med students have studied cadavers of my size. People of my size are included in clinical trials, and medicines are made for people around my weight. When I die, my weight isn't going to be the first thing that's blamed or marked as my cause of death, even if it had nothing to do with why I died. Fat phobia is real and it's a social justice issue. It's going to take all of us with thin privilege to get on board to make a difference in this. You don't have if you privilege. have friends and family, if you have a social media account, then you have a platform and your voice is important. Use it to speak up against anti-fatness. Okay. What's your name, fat body? Madison Dance Life. Okay. She's talking about thin privilege. This chick is fat. And obese just based on like her neck and her clavicle like i can't see your clavicle so like you look just like you look like you're wearing a i don't know a bodysuit like i don't see any i can't see your collarbone so i don't know if you're talking about you having thin privilege because maybe next like tess holiday you have thin privilege so what are we talking about here yeah of course she's reading a script i don't know like this is disgusting if you're just listening i can't even explain her room she has a room that is bright green, unless it's like a green screen for filming. I doubt it. Her, she has a sea green door, a bright green, like color coded, like monochrome green. She has bright. Bl I, I can't. I fucking can't. Wait. So thin privilege part two, unexpected thin privileges. I'm not subject to eugenics and could receive fertility treatments if I wanted to. My kids wouldn't be taken away from me for being the same body size as me. How's that thin privilege? If you're fat, you get your kids taken away from you? I don't think so. I don't think so. I've never heard of that in my life. You could receive treatments. What, to get pregnant? I mean, obese people have a harder time getting pregnant because you're not healthy. Crash test dummies were made for me. Oh, that's thin privilege? Look, you're not supposed to be morbidly obese. Okay. You're not supposed to be. So what every car company in the world has to just make, turn into like the fucking magic school bus just because you won't stop eating and you don't want to take care of your health and you want brownie points for trashing your health. You want attention and power for doing nothing. Why don't you shut up and work harder at whatever you do? Fine. Be, if, be fat, be obese. You're still going to have health problems. If you're happy with that, then fine. Then go be an artist or paint or, I don't know, collect collect money from the government, unemployment, because you obviously don't work. Like, I mean, I'm assuming you don't because most people that have jobs are fucking doing that shit and creating something in this world. They have a career. They're not just complaining on TikTok. She might have a job. She might. She might as some kind of like body positive coach at an institution near you. So I'm not saying that she doesn't have a job, but she certainly has a lot of time to complain about shit. It would make sense that she wants, she wants something for nothing. So why not get money for nothing? My seatbelts work for me. My BMI doesn't exclude me from being able to donate my body to science. What does that have to do with it? You can't donate your body to science. There's a lot of bodies to donate at that size. Maybe because they don't want to see unhealthy organs. Like, why would that be a, maybe because they have to transport them to a campus and it's just a lot more weight. They can't ship at UPS. They have to use freight or something like that. Right. Can't be standard. So <laughs> cadavers of my size. I don't know how that maybe be, I don't know. I don't know how that matters. You're dead. What the fuck do you care? Do you want to be, a, you're going to be a medical study anyway. You're not going to last too much longer. Medical trials. 
in clinical trials and medicines, well, a lot of times they don't want to test people that are unhealthy. It's another reason why it's dangerous to put someone who's morbidly obese under anesthesia and to have surgery and joint surgery because you can just fuck up your, your ACL repair or your, your knee surgery, your hip surgery. It's very common to have to lose weight before surgery so you don't destroy the surgery and you recover faster and blah, blah, blah. When I die, my weight is going to be the first thing that's blamed or marked for the cause of death. It's not your weight. It's your lifestyle habits that led you to be that weight. Okay, sweetheart. It's a social justice issue. I mean, you're making it a social justice issue. Why not? Because it's not a real scientific issue, right? It's not a real health issue. This is the problem. It's not a social justice issue. It's a health issue. Anything's a social justice issue. Welcome to the, welcome to the, to 2021. Everything's a social justice issue. Just because you don't like something doesn't mean it's something worth fighting for. You have to fight for it. You're so righteous for not doing anything. You want, you want points for points and power for complaining. You're a good complainer. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you so much for not taking care of your health, eating too much, not exercising, refusing, refusing to excel, refusing to put effort into actually creating something of value in this world. You deserve all the attention. You deserve so much credibility for coloring your fucking hair red, for wearing this disgustingly abrasive blue choker necklace. And I guess for eating too much and not exercising, like, my God, you're a horrific person. Who would want to spend time with you? This is why these people are complaining online. They're creating this like victim coalition with this veil of compassion because they have no love and attention and they are really sad and they're really scared and they're really upset because they don't have friends. So they are projecting this onto other people and they're gathering, gathering a fucking army like Harry Potter, like the death eaters, right? The fat eaters, the Twinkie eaters, gathering an army of victims. They could surround themselves with people that make them feel better about themselves because they hate themselves and they don't get any real love and attention and they're very, very sad about it. And this is this kind of like internalized self-hatred, which is a shame, but that's why building discipline and building proper habits and taking care of your body and respecting yourself will generate that actual self-love. This is not self-love. You're just being pathetic. Posted up with a running crown. You are the king of the policy. You got 